Welcome to We Make Children's Books, the podcast that takes you through the imaginative minds of children's book authors and artists. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and in today's episode, we're excited to have with us the acclaimed and award-winning and inspirational author, V. Portland. V, thanks for joining <laughs> us this afternoon. Well, th- this afternoon... Yeah, well, afternoon here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, thank you for having me. First, can I use that to sort of introduce myself every single time? <laughs> <laughs> put, it, put it on your, put it on like your business card. Or yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or well, have someone lead the way every time. Or oh, here we have V. <laughs> <Right. laughs> that would work. Because <laughs> you now, so you're you're now part of. Uh, you have four books. One that you 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 wrote a chapter in for that was uh, called "Shine On You Crazy Daisy." That's correct? right. Um, and then you just finished uh, a successful crowdfunder that has they had two books on there. That was uh, "Who Am I?" and uh, "Kinder Happier You." So you nailed down that "Kinder." Ha- Is that the actual title? Because you weren't quite no. sure if that was going to be the title or not yet. No. Well, to to express how rubbish I am at titles, <laughs> okay, my first children's book. Every other page, it says, Mummy, where are we going? Uh-huh. And it still took me over a month to come up with the title, Where Are We Going? <laughs> <laughs> I am <Yeah>. that bad. <laughs> and and also you, you co-founded that Southampton Pride as well. I did, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was, you've really done your research. <laughs> um, yeah, that was following the Orlando shootings. Okay. And a friend of mine and, and his husband were living in New York and he was terrified because his husband was an NYPD cop. Mm-hmm. And um, he was terrified to go to Pride because they were expecting a lot of violence. And I just thought, well, why don't Southampton, why doesn't Southampton, we're the biggest city on the South Coast, why don't mm-hmm. we have a Pride? Right. And I put a post up on Facebook and why doesn't Southampton have a Pride? You know, my, my LGBT friends should have somewhere safe to go where we're all welcome, you know. Um, I don't identify as LGBT, but a lot I've, I've you know worked, been in cabaret environment for a long time and mm. and stuff. And um, someone said, "Well, why don't you do it?" And stupidly, I went, "All right, then no one else is." <laughs> so <laughs> we we put on a pride in ten weeks, and we were wow. expecting maybe five hundred people, and we had over five thousand. Wow! That's so amazing. yeah, yeah, it was yeah. tiring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you and you're also too and just another thing to you know to to, to highlight as well is that you're also one of the, the a finalists for the um the women who achieve awards as well yeah that's for my social enterprise because i run my own social, social enterprise and that's for that um for venus discover you love you cic so right. yeah i'm i'm really surprised about that <laughs> so it's wonderful the, the the creation of your 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 CIC was that the inspiration to work on your first book, um, or was that was that kind of happening in tandem with each other? Well, no. Um, I believe we all have a someday list. You know, or someday I'm going to do that. Thinking, no, I'm not really. But you know, we like to pretend that we will. But when the pandemic happened, I couldn't go into schools and groups anymore, hmm. and. I just thought, well, I've got to do something. And fortunately, just before the pandemic, I met a wonderful woman who um, from Oklahoma, actually. Uh, I know that's a long way from you, but still on your part of the world than mine. <laughs> and um, she's a writing coach. And she said, I think you really need to write a book, Fee. So, I said, you know, as we've discovered with pride, I have a tendency to go, yeah, all right, then. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, um, I started writing my book for adults, but I couldn't quite get into it. But from years of looking after children and having stood at a lot of bus stops and on train stations and hearing children go, where are we going? And parents going, shut up, I told you where we're going. Shut up, I'm on the phone. Because children are exhausting. And also over here, I don't know if it's the same over there, but in primary school, you're taught to be imaginative. You're taught to have these wonderful adventures in your head but as soon as you get to high school you're told to grow up be sensible mm-hmm. and so people don't have the confidence to be imaginative so i wanted to show that we can go anywhere we want sitting right here you know and to give the children the encouragement to have big imaginations but also for the the adults reading it to know that it 
you know, you can go anywhere. It's not like you have to, if it's like, if a child says, I want to be, I want to be an astronaut, you know, and they're four, you know, you don't go, well, don't be ridiculous. You can't do that. You know, because the next day they might want to drive a delivery van, you know, it's because that's what children do. They want to try lots of different things because it's about exploring the world, isn't it? And, but if people don't have the confidence to believe that we can go anywhere in our imaginations and they're not going to encourage it in others. So with my first book, I wanted to encourage that those, those two lines, mummy, where are we going? We're going off on a magical mystical carpet ride. have been in my head for years and years. And it was just because I was forced to stop last year right. that the, the rest of the story came right. and, um, yeah so it's that's what started it and then i started writing the adult book as well and then the second book the second children's book came to mind and i started writing that and then someone said i'm writing a business book for women who wants to be in it and again i went yeah all right then <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah it's uh it's just sort of happened. I haven't planned any of it, but it's all happened. <laughs> and so, so the illustrator for your, your two children's books, Donna McGee. Yep. How did, how did you find her? Well, she and I have known each other for a few years. She lives okay. quite locally. Um, but what was wonderful is that Donna's always worked in, in sculpture or mostly worked in sculpture. And then um, when I decided I was going to do the book, I messaged her and said, you know, I'd really like you to be the illustrator. And she said, before COVID, she would have said, no, that's not, I, I don't do that. Mm. But she decided that she'd say yes as well. So uh, it's her first book too. And it, it's lovely that we get to work together. And she's done a, a brilliant job of translating my brain, really. <laughs> um, she's, she's just fantastic. So, and she didn't, the fact that I wanted the cat on every page, you know, it wasn't like a why, it was, yeah, all right then. So, um, <laughs> yeah, which is my kind of person. Uh, but yeah, and lots of colour because I do yeah. love colour. Right. So we, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of people that listen to this that are um, trying to be a children's book author or, try, or, or looking to do that. Um, what would be, how did you, so how did you start this? Like, how did you, did you kind of have a draft already in place and you shared it with Donna? How did, talk to us through the process of actually getting the book to its final stages. That would have been a very sensible way to do it. <laughs> I didn't do that. Um, so as I said, the, the book has been, the first two lines had been in my head for such a long time. Right. And then one lunchtime I sat and wrote it. <laughs> Um, which sounds really quick, but obviously it had been cogitating in there for some years. And right. yeah, I wrote it and then I shared it with my partner and, and he's quite honest, which is sometimes hurtful, but you know, I appreciate it. And he said, this is really good. Uh, so I shared it with a couple of other people whose opinion I trusted and they were all like, yeah, this is really good. And they also all appreciated that part of what I wanted is that I wanted Emily, the little girl in the story, to have a visible difference, uh, but I didn't want it to be part of the story because less than 4% of books have a person with a, a disability in them. And when they do, it's usually about the disability and they are great for raising awareness but I also feel it points out our differences. So I wanted people to read my book um, and look at Emily, mm. but I don't mention her disability at all uh, until the questions at the back, I have activity questions on the back page so that teachers can use it as a lesson plan or okay. you know, encouraging conversation at home because I wanted people to see that they have more in common that she's just a little girl, you know, she's a human before she's anything else. And that was really important to me. And quite often people don't notice because they're too involved in, in the pictures and the fact that they're beautiful and this, there's silliness in them as well. Mm. And it's not until the end, but there's, there's been studies done that show that children will often 
not make friends with someone who looks different to them, whether that be because of their race, their size, because they have a visible difference. So I wanted to show that, again, we all have more in common than what makes us different. And mm. so, yeah, it's quite often not until the questions that they realise that Emily has a prosthetic limb, um, mm. even though it's not hidden in, well, it's not seen on the astronaut page. Um, but yeah, so her, her left leg is a prosthetic limb. Um, yeah, so it was, it was really important to me and, and thankfully people loved the message as well. And yeah, so they were all very supportive. And so this came out, this came out in March. Uh, yeah. how, what was the process? How long did it take for you to go from writing it out to then having you know, Donna illustrate it? And um, how long was the book in process? Well, I wrote it sort of around this time last year, probably. Wow, okay. And then I decided I'd run a crowdfunder to try and get it funded. Um, and I could do that through the community interest company. And I set it up so that people could choose to donate a book as well, uh, which people really enjoyed. They liked that they could buy one to donate or buy one for themselves and donate another one. And we ended up getting over 100 donated that went out to schools and nursery groups and hospitals and charities, which was oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so that happened October, November last year. And Donna had started doing the drawings by that point. And all of the illustrations went to a lady who did the formatting in February time. And she did the formatting. It went to the printers in March and it came out mid-March. So, yeah, it, it didn't feel very quick at the time, but look at the <laughs> process, really. Uh, and same with this one. You know, right. uh, the crowdfunder finished last Wednesday and the aim is to get both the children's book and the adult's book out by the end of November. Uh, so Donna's working on the illustrations now and... Um, I'm editing the final draft of the book for adults. And yeah, so that'll all be out by the end of November, which I'm not scared about at all. Honest, my heart hasn't just been up. It's fine. <laughs> so what is the, so how did that work where you actually decided to have, I'm going to make a sequel to, is it basically, uh, so who am I? Is it, is it a sequel to uh, where are we going? Or is it just kind of like another book with Emily in it? Yeah, another book with Emily in. Okay. This one's slightly different. They're still going on lots of imaginary adventures, okay. but this one's more about confidence boosting as well. Okay. So uh, in the book, you know, the mum will say we're going uh, on a rainbow sea in a boat full of bubbles, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the cover of the book. That's my favourite picture in the book. But um, in this one, it's, you know... Um, you're kind enough to help sloths cross the road. You know, you're you're loving enough to do this. You're fun enough to do this. About boosting a child's confidence, but also helping them see that it's who we are and what we do that matters. You know, it's not about, oh, yes, you're beautiful. It's about helping them see that there's so much we can do. There's so much that makes us who we are beyond what we look like. Uh, so, yeah, that was the, the aim with this one as well. Well, hey there. If you're enjoying our podcast, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. Your support means the world to us and helps us keep this show going. We love hearing from you. So any feedback is welcome. Thank you for being a part of our podcast family and for all your support truly means a lot to us. So, so like when, when this book was, when the, when the first book was finished, where are we going? Did you, did you immediately say, oh, I, I still have more lessons. I still have more things I want to talk about. I need to make another book. How did that happen? Well, it was partly because once the book came out, people started saying, oh, we need more books. Okay. There are questions that children ask. Yeah. So, uh, and someone, I said, okay, so what questions do people ask and do children ask? And they said, well, who am I was one of them. So that's this one coming out next. But I'm working on, are we nearly there yet as well, uh, which will hopefully come out next year. 
So, um, because that's obviously a global question, I would imagine, yeah. uh, that children ask. So, uh, yeah, so it just sort of seemed natural to to continue the theme, but not yeah. to make it a continuation of a story. Okay. It, they're all going to be separate. But I've also, I found a story I wrote many years ago that um, I used to go to a writing group about 12 years ago. And one week our homework was to write a children's poem or something. Poetry is not my thing at all. But I wrote this cat alphabet thing and I found it a few weeks ago. Oh, and cool. um, I've tweaked it and I, I hope to get that done as well. Uh, so again, we, I want all the cats to be representative of, I don't want them all to be cute little kittens. I want them to be like cats are you know so some will be cute little kittens but some will be haggard and one-eyed and three-legged and tatty and you know and all of that sort of thing um so yeah so my my brain seems to be very much in this zone right now <laughs> <laughs> and and so and then also too plus you know plus you came here you you wrote down like who am i uh and then why did you decide to also do that kinder happier you well as a that and what can people expect from that book so that book was because this this writing coach said you need to write a book mm. for adults and um i've thought about it so many times over the years and i've only ever written at most a page right but with the help of of dr jennifer jones the coach she she got me doing these exercises that were like oh, I don't see the point so like drawing things with crayons on colored paper right. and but it really did waken up the creativity in my brain that I hadn't used for a long time and so I started writing the bulk of it's been written this year I started co-writing with another woman who wanted to write a book as well and that helped with the discipline but this book part of it is is autobiographical so I'm sharing why I hated who I was, why I hated how I looked, why I felt so worthless and how I overcame it mm. and encouraging people to do the same things that I did that aren't, you know, like self-help books are great, but they can sometimes feel insurmountable when you're in the midst of feeling like rubbish. Right. So I wanted it to be a more friendly approach to it and go, well, I tried this, this bit did not work this bit was great, you know, mm. to show that, to give a more human element to it. But there's also things in there about body positive parenting. There's um, chapters in there on inclusion, you know, and how we can make, how we can consider things more to be more inclusive of everybody, whether that's because of a physical health condition or a mental health condition or neurodiversity, you know, all of those sorts of things. It's really putting all of my life in however many pages it's going to be uh, to hopefully spread the message further that you know it's the world would be much better if we were all just that bit kinder um right. yeah and that we can overcome horrible things uh, it right. doesn't have to be we don't have to live within the limitations that either we set or other people set for us right. so you do you know, hearing you hearing you talk like a, uh, talk about this, it's like, you know, you're you have a you know you know a great you know you know following. You have a lot of uh, friends of V here that uh, so and then and then you have, we have some people that are be as I say will be asking the questions like, how do you do all this with you know and so because some people like you know they have you know they have you know a job here and there. So how do you take the time out to to do this writing? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's because I have disabilities as well. I'm very much working with how my body works. Yeah. So for me, my ideal work day would be 12 till nine, you know, starting around noon till nine o'clock at night, um, which my partner's not too happy with because he gets home from work and wants to watch the telly. And I'm there, like, I'll half watch it and half work. Um, but I think because... I love it all. I think that's probably it. You know, yeah. I mean, sometimes it gets tiring. Sometimes it gets frustrating. You know, running a social enterprise, it's really hard to get money in. 
you know, I get told every day how much my work is needed, how important it is, how it's going to be even more important now, because we've all been staring at our faces in these little screens for the last 18 months and scrutinizing, finding flaws. So part of it is sheer determination because I wanted to get through because I know I'm going to be needed more. My CIC is going to be needed more. Um, but it is it is just because I love it. And I really, I really believe we're all here to make a difference mm. and we choose whether that's a good one or a bad one. And I want to leave the world a kinder place than when I joined it. That's my aim in life. And again, I know it sounds rather big and you know, but knowing I've made a difference, even if it's just to a few people, right. it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? You know, it's a great thing to be able to say we can do. And yeah, so it, it is just, I think also finding the time to do it is, we've got, you know, these incredible devices now where, you know, I can be sat on a bus and writing something on my phone, can't I? You know, and it's it's not like, 15, 20 years ago, where if you left your house, you couldn't work on anything. It's like, well, if I get an idea, I just write it down straight away. And we talked earlier about the amount of books we have in the house. I also have quite the stationary habit. So I've got notebooks everywhere, so I can just grab one wherever I am and write something down. So yeah, so the house, my brain is quite cluttered because I'm always thinking of things to do but my house is also quite cluttered because it's representative of my brain. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's just very lucky I have the skills to do what I do because I love it. And so, and, and you mentioned earlier too, is that, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, these projects, you know, it takes a village. So what would be your advice, you know, other than being a children's book author or being an author as well as, you know, finding that illustrator, which you're lucky enough to, you know, find Donna who, whose art style matches your writing style. And who else would you say, you know, from advice, advice perspective, you know, if you're going to get a book made, you need this person or that person or this type of skill set. What would you recommend as well to help out? For me, I am not technically adept. I could possibly learn how to do the uploading to Amazon and formatting and stuff, but I don't want to because that is not where my skill set lies I don't enjoy it and it's like I've got enough to keep me entertained without learning things like that that have no appeal yeah. so I found somebody who did that as a job and it really helped having someone who knew what they were talking about who Donna and I Donna shared a video yesterday I think or the day before where she talked about how she comes up with the ideas for the illustrations and she said that in the with the first book we both learned as we went along and neither of us knew i knew that i wanted it to be this sort of size and i knew what i wanted it to look like right. i didn't know how that was going to happen um so we had someone who did know so she told us told us about you know making sure the illustrations even though when you see them in their original form it looks like they've got a big gap in the middle but mm. to keep the illustrations away from the spine, uh, because otherwise you'll lose a lot of the definition in there, uh, to make sure that there's space to write, <coughs> excuse me, um, to so that the words aren't squished in. Um, and because I also wanted the, the wording to be quite big, right. because it was important to me that children with, with uh, vis what's the word I'm looking for? who have limited visibility, that's mm. still the wrong word, but you know what I mean, who have an mm. impairment right. could still read it because most children with visible impairments do still read, they just need the writing to be bigger. Um, so I wanted that as well. So it really helped knowing someone. And I think I go to a lot of networking because of my community interest company. I go to a lot of networking events. And with those, you you tend to get, you tend to meet a lot of people, but also if even if they don't do it, they'll know someone who does do it. So it's, for me, it was important while someone that knew what they were doing rather than me trying to do it myself and make a mess of it and find it stressful. And and I would have procrastinated as well mm. and the book would still not be out if it was left up to me to do it. Um, the technical stuff, because it's just not my thing. So it, it was asking for help and finding the people that I could pay to do the stuff. 
What what were some of the lessons you learned on your first book that you actually utilized for putting out your second crowdfunder? What for the crowdfunder itself or for the book? For the book, yeah. Yeah. So for the book, it was like things I mentioned before that were a lot to do with illustrations, but also thinking about sentence lengths. Okay. Because you can't have a paragraph's worth of words on a children's book like this you know it's not suitable for the age group for a start but it's almost like the the words are there to guide people right. but they can't overwhelm them you know it's about encouraging them to think for themselves to be inspired by the pictures to to have bigger thoughts from reading it so it was about condensing some of the sentences I wrote. So what I did with, with both where are we going and with who am I, I wrote it out first in longhand because I tend to. Um, it was only something like 45 lines, I think, in the book. So it wasn't like it took huge amounts of paper or time. Uh, but then condensing the sentences so it wasn't a huge long line of words. So. Mm. Yeah, I think that was it, really. It, a lot of what we learned was about the illustrations. And for me, yeah, to condense my sentences a little bit. Yeah. And how did, did you did you do that to like just with some self-editing? Or did you have somebody who was like a line editor who that, that does children's books and say, hey, cut this out, contract this? Or how did that work? No, I, I did it myself. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I also, and I highly recommend this for whatever you're writing, really, is to read it out loud. Mm -hmm. um, before you show anyone, because if you read it out loud and it sounds clunky, it's going to read even clunkier. Um, mm -hmm. So that helped. But then also because I know Jennifer, my writing coach, she very kindly read it over as well. And, you know, so I was lucky enough to have those people that I could ask. Um, and again, because it's only a short book, it doesn't take very long for someone like Jennifer who... Uh, did coach me to read through it very quickly and understand everything. So mm. the feedback was good straight away. Okay. And how did, and so, you know, partnering with, with Donna on that, how much of a, a give take that you have where she would say, Hey, can you do Cause you said that when she would show you the illustrations, you're like, Oh, this is great. Did she have any um, feedback on, how the words would fit on the page and saying, did she help you out with the editing piece of that to make sure the words were yeah. flowing right? Yeah, not not so much with the words flowing, but I I have these very big ideas, which will probably come as no surprise by now. Um, <laughs> and I'd be saying like, oh, you know, I'd love this on there and I'd love that on there and I'd love that on there. And she's like, well, but where are we going to put Emily? <laughs> where are we going to put the words? So she's very good at, putting what I want down, but not listening to me go on about what I want for more. Um, <laughs> and she explains it all and she does it in such a gentle way that I don't ever feel offended by it. So um, yeah, so we, when I wrote this one, we got together over a coffee and, and we talked it through and I said what I wanted and, you know, and because of the because the, the, every other line in the book is very much saying what they're doing, right. there wasn't like huge things for her to, ma to imagine. The harder parts are the pages in between mm. that, you know, when Emily's asking, who am I? Um, so it's what they're doing then that will follow on to the next bit. So, yeah, but it, it's very much collaborative. You know, she's been brilliant at putting everything that I want down and creating these beautiful images i mean i you know in i found out about last week i was looking up something there's a page in the book in the new book where emily goes swimming uh, under the sea and um i was looking about whether someone would wear a prosthetic limb while they were swimming and most people don't if you look at the paralympics that have just happened most of them don't have their prosthetics on and as I was Googling all of this, I found out about a dolphin in America that's got a prosthetic fin tail. So I messaged Donna and said, look at this. 
so now she's putting the dolphin in the book for me as well um because i thought well, that would be wonderful wouldn't it you know again it's about it's so important we see ourselves represented in books isn't it right. so but to see for a child to see that there's also an animal with a prosthetic as well especially a dolphin i mean who doesn't love dolphins <laughs> um you know it's just incredible and she was like well i'll have to rub that out i'm like it's fine you know um i want the dolphin so yeah she's been very patient with me. <laughs> Hey folks, I just wanted to take a quick break and say thank you so much for listening and watching Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. If you can, please subscribe. If you can, hit the like button. Go ahead and leave a review on your favorite podcast app that you like to be listening to this on. And remember, always, always support local artists, support local writers, support independent creators. It sure does mean a lot to them. And we will be here at Story Comic to make sure that their voices are being heard. Thank you. And, and, and talk to us a bit about, you know, as your crowdfunding, did, what were some of the things that you let, similar to that, um, lessons learned from your first crowdfunder as can, that you, you put that lessons learned from there that you were able to utilize for your second crowdfunder? Um, the first one, before I did the first one, people would say, it's exhausting. It's 24-7. You know, it's really hard work. And I was like, oh, don't be daft. It's a few posts a day. It's fine. <laughs> it's 24-7. It's exhausting. <laughs> um, you know, you, you don't realise how much hard work it is. I mean, you've got to be everywhere. You've got to turn up to the opening of an envelope to promote it. You've got to encourage people. It feels like every other sentence is about the crowdfunder for an entire month that it's running. Right. Um, crowdfunder recommend that you do all or nothing. So I did that. They also recommend that you only do it for four weeks because okay. the emergency of you know, people sense the intensity that it's got to be done. Yeah. But I do it for five weeks because then I get two paydays usually, you know, so people might contribute one time and then do it the next time, or they might not be able to this month, but they will at the end of the next month. Right. Um, so I did it the same time length this time but i stupidly chose to do it in the hardest month of the year to do a crowdfunder um so it was much harder work this time but thankfully um people were supportive of it immediately uh, a lovely guy really loved what i do uh, loves what i do so he was incredibly supportive a former employer of mine uh, you know, I looked after her sons. I don't want to admit how long ago, uh, but they're all grown up now. Um, but, you know, she's been incredibly supportive too and promoting it to her friends and the people in her network. And, yeah, so it's it really makes a difference, I think, if you put yourself out there. I mean, you you because I was doing it for both the Emily book and for my book for adults right you know i had to i'm wearing the same dress in that video look i do have other dresses. Um, <laughs> but, um yeah it's about showing authenticity you know and, and sharing the hard stuff sharing you know when i was up at late at night crying because it felt like it wasn't going to get any bigger and it wasn't going to succeed and how was i going to do it if not hmm. uh, so it helped having people involved you know and, and i would have people messaging me at all times of day and night going, I've just looked at the crowdfunder, it's gone up to 58%, you know? So they were involved in it as well because I was out there talking about it. Right. So I would recommend to anyone that wants to do it to know that it's gonna be hard work, but you have to put yourself out there a lot. But I also think that the, the giving the option to donate, people really like that too. Mm -hmm. um, and especially as the books will be out for Christmas to be able to put them in gift boxes for children in care or for children in hospital at Christmas and, and things like that. I think people really liked that idea that they, you know, sometimes we can feel like we're wasting money. You know, it's a kid's book. I don't want to spend that amount of money. But if they're getting a, a lovely, happy feeling because they're buying something to benefit someone else, then it's a win-win for everybody. Mm. Um, 
yeah so I, I would if if you can do that I would recommend that as an option you know when I don't know about the literacy figures over where you are but here something like one in eight children don't own a book wow. uh, because of poverty um so to be able to have a part in I mean obviously I can't give a book to all of those however many children it would be that would be incredible wouldn't that be marvelous but um yeah if, if you find things that resonate with people you know and most people in my circle were like I, I can't believe that you know I can't believe that a child doesn't have a book of their own right you know even people that aren't readers still buy books for children mm -hmm. um so I think that helped a lot so to find a a cause that correlates with yours especially with children's books with the literacy element mm -hmm. then that really helped too I think and talk to us, and I noticed too, like on this this past Kickstarter, you have um, some levels where you have a notebook, uh, a mug, and coaster. Uh, so for those that are looking for, you know, I have a, you know, someone says I got a children's book based off of submarines, or I have a children's book based off of um, the moon, or and so do do you find that there's been some success in having? Um, uh, companion objects that match the theme to the book uh, well it has helped this time those they weren't on my list of things to add oh okay. halfway through the crowdfunder a wonderful lady i know through networking messaged me and she runs a print business and she said i will provide the mugs and the coasters and the notebooks put them on your crowdfunder and if anyone buys them i will donate them uh, oh, wow. So it okay. wasn't an extra cost for me. Okay. And I think, again, that, that goes back to the fine things that people feel strongly about, you know. Uh, so she loves what I do with my social enterprise. She loves what I do with, with my books. Right. So she was using her skills to help use my skills. So that was really lucky. Um, I'm very grateful that, that people did that, um, mm -hmm. that she did that. So... Yeah, but people are do seem to really like the idea of it. And, you know, as I said already, you know, I, I love stationery. So the fact that I've got a notebook with her on as well is is lovely. Um, yeah, so with the crowdfunder, like I said, find something that resonates with people. Make it feel like it matters. You know, this isn't just a vanity project where it's a, a story about your dog, Bob, or something. <laughs> You know, it's about getting people wanting to be involved, about making them care about it too. Right. Um, and that that really helped. Um, and it was, you know, obviously I, do, I don't want them to, they see that I'm passionate about it. They see that I care about it. You know, I'm not just going out there and doing Oscar winning performances of, <laughs> you know, oh yes, do this. You know, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm going out and saying, you know, this really matters. And they believe in it. You know, they believe in me. They believe in my stories. They believe in what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And like this wonderful man who really boosted the crowdfunder a lot, he said, you know, I would love to do what you do, but I can't. So I'm going to support you doing it. Wow. Um, and, and that's it. You know, the whole, with all of this, it's about getting out there and talking to people, which is exhausting. It's also wonderful because you, well, I've met this wonderful man. I didn't know him three weeks ago. Um, and now I, you know, I, I can't wait to go over. And he lives on the Isle of Wight, which is a very tiny island, uh, you know, just off the south coast. And I'm planning when I can go and see him because I just want to go up to him and hug him and then go, thanks very much, and leave probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing, the people that come through and you don't realise um how supportive people want to be i mean even i said about an ex-employer being really supportive and she's still in touch with some of the parents of the boys friends you know that they were playing with when they were one and two and some of them bought the book okay. you know they've got adult children now but they still bought the book because they remember what i did with the boys and you know it makes a difference make it personal you know people are buying you as much as they're buying the book it's so true. they've got to like it. You're, you're right. I mean, it's as I said, everybody has a story to tell and being able to, and only you can tell your story. Yeah. So, right. 
Yeah. Well, this is this is great, Via. Like I said, congratulations on two successful uh, crowdfundings. Yeah. Um, and do you see this as a so? Would you would your advice be as well for for the for writers to say, hey, definitely do the crowdfunding source, or would you say, um, uh, were there any other avenues of maybe self publishing or any other things that you would recommend? A, a lot of people do put it straight onto Amazon. Yeah. Um, and that's a far cheaper way of doing it. So that is, you know, if you have the skills to do that, if you're talented enough to be able to do the formatting as well as the story and the illustrations and you can do that. I know a lot of authors now who have self-published and that's what they do. They put their books straight up there. Hmm. But for me, it was important to have the option of donating and that meant that I had to have the books myself. Right. Um, and also I wanted to... Again, another great idea that was far more time consuming than I expected was I wanted to send every book out myself and I put a handwritten note with every single one. I wrapped them up in tissue paper and I put uh, 25 alternative uses for the box uh, in every box as well, uh, which was lovely. I've had videos back of children turning the box into a fish tank and, or pretend fish tank, turning the box into their own storybook and, and things like that. Um, but I wanted it to be you know, when we get parcels from Amazon or other book places, they come in brown wrapping and you open it and you go, oh, that's nice. And you put it aside. But I wanted it to be a gift. I wanted people to enjoy opening it, to see it as something pleasurable. Because if you do that, if you're taking time over opening it, you're more likely to take time over enjoying it. Right. So even though it was incredibly time consuming, and I still do that now for every book that's sold on the website, um, I love the reactions that people send me, you know, and they appreciate it. I mean, I, I was somewhere a couple of weeks ago and they got the book back in March and they're still going on about how much they liked it. And I am really not, you know, I'm pretty much a chimpanzee when it comes to wrapping. I'm not very tidy at all. <laughs> they liked the thought behind it. They liked the fact that I took the time because that meant they realised that I valued them buying it. Right. You know, I didn't just want to go, oh, yeah, I send it out in an envelope, it's fine. Yeah. I wanted people to know that I appreciated what I'd done, you know, that what they had done to support the project that they do to buy the book now. So that's why I wrote every note by hand as well, um, right. because it was important and they felt appreciated too. Right. That's great. Well, Thank you so much, V. Um, as I say, congratulations again Thank on two. And and make hey, come back when you write your when you another book. So okay, anytime. Yeah, yeah. you know, add add story comic to your to your to your list of uh, places to come do some promotion. So brilliant. You, congratulations again, like on that, and congrat and, and all the hard work you've been doing, and all the all all the great energy and and all the all the great things you're doing. It's um, it's you. you're you're definitely an inspiration to to many people.